I've talked about motivation before. How to keep yourself motivated or finally listening to that inner voice and taking the first step and start creating. And today, I would like to talk about the results of actually following my own advice. Wow! And after reading several books, filming 42 videos, and one year later, this is the result. Hi, my name is Jorge. Welcome. In this channel, we merge creativity and productivity to try to live a more fulfilling life. A couple weeks ago, I passed the 1000 subscriber mark. And exactly one year ago, July 9th, 2020, I posted my very first YouTube video. Time is the most important thing that a human being has. So thank you very much for giving me your time, for watching my videos, for liking and subscribing. Thank you very much. It means a lot. For the past year, I've been making videos for fun. No goals, no pressure, no numbers. All of this while being a full-time student. However, I always had the firm and clear notion that I could not give up. I could not stop. I just had to keep going. And this book helped me achieve that. Atomic Habits by James Clear. I would like to talk about how this book relates to my creative process, my photography, and my YouTube channel as well. Let's get started. Most people have heard about this, but in case you haven't, here's the recap. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. There may be a point in your life where things are not working out as expected. And although there's a lot of things to consider, one of the important questions that you have to ask yourself is, am I doing the same thing over and over again with the same results? And are you willing to change things? Are you willing to try new things? If you always keep doing the same thing and you get the same results, then why not be open-minded and try new things? I went through this a couple years ago and now I'm no stranger to change, small and big. Leaving the film industry and changing careers is one example, and moving abroad to a new country when I couldn't even speak the language is another example as well. But for the most part, people think that only the big and drastic changes can significantly change your life. And after thinking about my one year experience on YouTube, I disagree. In his book, James writes, habits are the compound interest of self-improvement. This is the notion that you don't need to make any big or drastic changes, but rather very tiny changes that compound over time and make you 1% better every day. Not focusing on the stats or numbers or goals, but rather getting better at the small little things that compound over time and make you better at whatever you're trying to do. In my case, that meant not worrying about subscribers and views and likes and anything like that, but worrying about getting 1% better every video that I make. Lighting, editing, sound, presence on camera, writing, etc. And to be clear, I'm not calling myself good at any of these things or claiming to be an expert or anything like that. But if I put side by side my first YouTube video and my last one, then the tiny little changes and improvements are very, very apparent. These changes have compounded over the last 365 days. It made me a little bit better with every single YouTube video that I made. I didn't really see the changes and improvements during that one year. I always try to be better, but I didn't really see it, if that makes sense. And now that I can take a step back and see my one year progress on YouTube, and only compare myself to who I was a year ago, then the changes are significant. And I'm using YouTube as an example, but this applies to everything. Learning a new language, trying to eat healthier, uh, exercising, learning how to play an instrument, etc. Because these changes are small and don't feel significant at the time, it can be very easy to just give up go back to your older self and just get the same results that you gotten before. We often expect progress to be linear, but in reality, the results of our efforts are often delayed. This can result in a valley of disappointment, where people feel discouraged after putting in weeks or months of hard work without experiencing any results. And I think every single person has gone through this at some point, whether it's trying to eat healthier and then giving up, or trying to go to the gym and then giving up, or trying to learn a new language or play a new instrument and just giving up, you name it. I had the idea of creating a YouTube channel for the past eight years or so, and every single year I would say, you know what, maybe I'm gonna try this year and then give up. 
and then the next year I would say the same thing maybe I'm gonna try it this year and then give up as well or perhaps I would actually start but then realize it's too much work and just give up and go back to my older self but eventually regret piled up on my desk and I had to change my approach and my mindset and just not give up so yeah I definitely suggest avoiding the valley of disappointment at all cost in his book James writes Goals are good for setting a direction, but systems are best for making progress. For me, it was a lot more important to practice my video editing skills and my writing skills and being on camera and lighting and sound than let's say focusing on goals and say I want X amount of subscribers. Goals did nothing to improve and grow this channel, but the systems of keep creating, keep getting better every single time and learning new things did improve the channel. And if YouTube were to give you 1 million subscribers out of nowhere, but your systems are flawed, your skills are lacking, your content is useless, then those subscribers would just vanish away, quickly unsubscribe. Because like James says, the implicit assumption behind any goal is this, once I reach my goal, then I'll be happy. If your goal is to get X amount of subscribers, let's say 1,000, instead of growing a community of like-minded people, provide value, help others, and enjoy the process of doing that, then the moment that you do hit that goal, you'll feel unhappy and empty, and you start to think, what now? Maybe 5,000 subscribers, maybe 10,000, and you start working towards that. A bit of an empty journey, if you ask me. And to be clear, there is nothing wrong with dreams, ideals, and goals. But if those goals are more important than the systems in place, i.e. the destination is more important than the journey, then you have to ask yourself, what is the point? In his book, James writes, a habit is a behavior that has been repeated enough times to become automatic. This, in my opinion, is one of the most difficult things about changing, growing, and learning new things. For me, it was very, very difficult at the beginning, to be honest. I had almost like an allergic reaction to sitting in front of the camera and just talking. However, every single week, I made time to sit down, write video ideas, research and expand those concepts, create, film it, edit it, etc. Those systems and those habits are already in place. They are automatic. Every week, I will write, I will film, I will edit, no matter what. I still have to put a lot of effort into the content that I create, but I don't have to fight myself and convince myself to do something that I don't want to do. And because the systems and the habits are already in place, and I don't really have to think about them because they're second nature, they're automatic to me, then I could actually focus on the content, on try to create good content and try to be 1% better than the last video. There's a section on how to build and create habits. It's a four stage process. Q craving, response, and reward. This part is a bit technical for my liking, but definitely important. I recommend you check it out, as well as other sections of the book that I don't feel necessarily apply to me or work well with my type of operation. And that is the beauty of thinking for yourself, hopefully absorbing the important parts, the ones that mean something to you, and letting the other parts that mean nothing to you go. And there's nothing wrong with that. In his book, James writes, The Goldilocks Rule states that humans experience peak motivation when working on tasks that are right on the edge of their current abilities. Not too hard, not too easy, just right. For me, this really explains wanting to improve, the 1% improvement on every video that I make, and how putting my oldest video with my newest offers a significant difference in results. Maximum motivation occurs when facing a challenge of just manageable difficulty. This could potentially be learning a new editing technique or a transition or a BFX or a title card or something along those lines. I'm not learning editing from scratch. I am not starting over. This is just an improvement on what I already know. And although perhaps I don't know how to achieve it, the challenge feels manageable. I'm happy with the results that I have on this channel, and I don't really compare myself to other people. I'm happy that I'm building a small community of like-minded individuals that you can share your thoughts and we can all help each other, and even if you don't agree with what I'm saying, you would still find an educated and mature way to express your thoughts. So did I know that I was going to have 1000 subs before I reached my one year mark on YouTube? No, of course not. 
But did I know that the one year mark or anniversary on YouTube would happen? Yes, absolutely. I was tired of regret, of not creating, of not taking action, and I was not going to give up. That one year anniversary on YouTube was going to happen with 10 subs, 100 subs, 1000 subs, that part, I don't know. But the one year mark was going to happen, no matter what. In a way, this book helped me realize what I subconsciously knew already. Your life experiences matter, and all the things you lived matter, all the regret, all the things you experience matter, and in turn, all these things made the contents of this book crystal clear to me. Atomic Habits by James Clear is one of the best books I've read in ages, and I strongly recommend it to anybody wanting to improve their lives and see things from a different perspective. So that is Atomic Habits. Overall, I really enjoyed it and I highly recommend it to anybody looking for a solid read. As always, I am curious to know what do you think? Have you heard about this book? Does it sound interesting to you? Share your thoughts in a comment down below. But that is it for today's video. If you found this video helpful or valuable, please like and subscribe and also follow me on Instagram as well. Thank you very much for watching, for giving me your time and your energy, and good luck with your creative process.